right, we're live. I'm going live at the opposite end of the day, just to mix it up. <laughs> I always go live around the same time. So this is 8.43 p.m. my time. All right, Darren, how are you, man? Welcome. We've got a few guys here already. Let us know where you're from as well, if I haven't seen you before. And um, so this will be a little bit of a what's coming up mixed with a little bit of a QA and a kind of deal, just whatever. Hey Dylan, how are you mate? Good thanks, how are you? Lewis, welcome. All right, cool. So uh, I got a couple of cool things to show you guys. One of which uh, is gonna be like the, the weirdest thing you've probably seen all day. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna just give you my first impressions of this as well, because it's odd. Uh, well, I don't know if it's odd, but the box it came in is kind of odd. So I'm looking forward to uh, showing you guys this stuff. Luminosity Music, welcome. San Diego, cool stuff. <laughs> well, I'm usually on in the mornings here, which is the like 6, 7 p.m. San Diego time, I think, around maybe 10 o'clock. I could be wrong, but. Vinci Jail, welcome. Uh, Jack says, what do I think of the Tweed NOS uh, Blues Junior? Yeah, they're pretty cool. They've got the Jensen speaker. I, I like them. They're, I, I would suggest playing them first. Some people don't seem to like the Jensen speakers, um, but I, I think they're pretty cool. Uh, Wolf, how are you? All right, far away from Melbourne. Yeah, I thought, you know what? Maybe we'll, this will appeal to some of the local time zones as opposed to always the overseas ones. So yeah, this was just a bit of a in the moment kind of live stream deal. And uh, I'm gonna show you a, a box that uh, is hilarious because there's a guitar in it and there shouldn't almost be a guitar in there. Uh, Rob says, what's that red beast behind me? So um, over here, sorry, that's the Pure Salem guitars, uh, uh, Mendiola. I've just put the video up Oh, well, it depends where you live, but it went up about 12 hours ago. Awesome guitar. It's got a mini humbucker and a tally neck pickup. I'll give you a quick look at this anyway. Yeah, the video just went up, so that's what it looks like. It's an American company. These are made, that's just dust on the back. Um, these, are just, these are made in uh, South Korea. Really cool guitar. Kind of like the Reverend guitars in terms of uh, feel and quality, that, that sort of thing. So yeah, they're really cool. Listening to Blind Willie McTell. Okay, I don't know who that is. Hey Todd, welcome. Finally got to see a live stream from Melbourne. Awesome stuff. So yeah, I'm glad there's a, hopefully we'll get a few people that are a bit more local to, to where I am as well. I'm always uh, streaming in the mornings here, which is PM in the US. Well, most of my audience is overseas. So uh, or a big portion of it is, so that's kind of why I do that most of the time. But I thought we'd mix it up and uh, see how this went. So I'll show you a couple of little things that are coming up. Uh, I'm kind of getting a little bit of a backlog. This first one might be one of the coolest things I've seen in a while. And I'm going to do a video on this. I haven't shot it yet. It's called the Exchanger. It's a pickup enhancer. And the reason I said yes to this is because I don't think I've seen anything quite like it. There used to be a Seymour Duncan pickup booster that was out years ago, which kind of tried to turn your single coils into humbuckers, but it didn't quite do it very well. I owned it too, so it was a good little pedal, but um, this is supposed to take any signal and change it. I don't know if that's going to work, but you can change your uh, low output cheap single coils into Texas Specials or soap bar pickups or whatever you like. I don't know, I just thought it was pretty cool. So essentially you can take any pickup and turn it into something else. Changes the, the um, level, the, the way that the, the voicings are and all that kind of stuff as well. I had a quick play through this, it's kind of interesting. So um, yeah, just something a little bit different. Massimo, thank you. Mark from the UK, awesome stuff. We've got uh, Kenji from uh, Kengi. Oh, in Werribee. Oh, there we go. Cool. Barossa Valley. Nice. Rodrigo from Argentina. Awesome stuff. 
Thanks, Todd. Yeah, the red guitar sounds great. I played it live a few times already. That bridge pickup is just, is really, really cool. So you've probably seen like most guys are doing these uh, X Vive or however you say it, wireless guitar systems. Uh, I've used these twice live already, the uh, wireless packs, and uh, they work well. They're maybe not the, the, the sturdiest of feeling items in the world, but in terms of their response, they worked pretty well. I'm going to shoot a video for those, and I've also got one of these XLR adapter things as well, which is pretty cool. There's a couple of really good uses for these that you can use them for, and I'll go through those in the video. But um, these feel like really high quality units, whereas these kind of feel a little cheap and nasty. Um, but, but they work fine, so as long as they're reliable. Kind of like a Line 6 Varia, Variax, uh, but in a pedal. Yeah, I think it's all analog too, so that pickup loader will take, say you've got a $35 guitar, you can make it sound a whole lot better by this pickup loading system thing that it's got, it's pretty cool. And you can also change them from like uh, single coils to humbuckers or you can take a humbucker and turn it into a P90 tone. Uh, it does pretty much everything and you can output, you can change the output of the pickup. You can make them brighter or less bright and all that kind of stuff as well. So um, I've never heard of it before. Uh, when I saw the email come through, I thought, you know what? This looks pretty cool. It's built in France and it's called the Exchanger from Keys Tone. So you can probably look that up. You'll probably find something online. Um, I don't know if videos have already been up of this, but I, I was completely unaware of it. So I thought I'll give it a go. Uh, this will be an interesting thing. I got a Harley Benton power pack. These are great for your phones. <laughs> I'm not sure how I like using it for my pedals, but uh, I'll go into that on the video. It's all right. It's just a little noisy and I'm surprised that something that's battery powered can be noisy. But anyway, we'll, we'll get into that. Um, all right, so I'll show you this. See, see what you think of this. Let me just move my screen here so I can see what's going on. We've got 40 people here already, welcome. If you do have any questions, guys, feel free to ask. I'm happy to answer some questions if there's anything that comes up. Otherwise, um, I'm just gonna show you this and see if you're conf as confused by it as what I am. So uh, let's, let's take a look at this. Uh, does it work with pedals? Uh, it, it should work with pedals. I think it's literally like something you can just throw on the chain either at the start or probably at the start. It's just what well, anything from there on will change the tone of your guitar. Hi from uh, Ur Uruguay in Spain. Is that... Uh, say where it sounds better, a Gretsch guitar. I'm not sure what you mean, mate. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so that pickup loader will do... Uh, what are they called? The, the Gretsch pickups, the, the TV Jones sort of sound as well. Greetings from sunny Greece. Welcome. Vs Audio, how you doing? How did you go with the Sides import on the Rosewood board? Uh, it turned up extremely fast. So however it was organized, it got here no problems. And I didn't have to do any of that. Um, they sent it out. So that's up to them to do it. If I had bought it, the, the, uh, the shipper still has to organize that. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Finally almost over this cough. Thanks, Simon. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, feeling way, way better, finally. Uh, I slept this afternoon, actually. I'm still exhausted. So, uh, yeah, anyway, let's, let's check this out. So when you see something like this, you don't often think, hey, that's a guitar. Because I'll show you why. Because a guitar looks like this, right? and it's not even close. <laughs> so, uh, this, this was intriguing. Uh, I don't know if other people have done videos of this. I, I don't often look up a lot of stuff before I, I say yes to things. I, I, as in what other people have done or if they've shot videos on this already, but I thought this might be kind of fun to at least share the experience with you. So, um, this is a box that's about knee height on me. So it's very small. Supposedly there's a guitar in here. <laughs> Inflatable, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm just gonna... Ugh. All right, so it's packed well. They shipped it with two pieces of wood against each side of the box, which is a really great idea. Um, ooh, it smells kind of cool. Oop. 
bolt on neck off. I, I don't, yeah. So this is, <laughs> this is what I'm gonna, I'm gonna find this out. Look, I saw this via the email. I didn't even check the website. I was just like, the idea of this is hilarious. Let's, uh, let's see what it is. So overhead journey instruments. The gig bag already is really nice, actually. What do we got? We got uh, some tools and whatever else in there. So let's let's check this out. I'll put this up on the seat here. Hopefully this works. All right. Let's uh, let's open this thing up. I'm just keen to see what this is all about. This is one of the. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, someone said folding. Who was that? Todd? I think you might be right, mate. Wow. Now I'm not... Wow, oh, okay. This is interesting. I think the neck's in here. It is. Wow. This is one of those things where if you don't do this right, you probably make a good old fashioned mess of it, but far out. And it's a lefty. This is uh, actually wood. I thought it was gonna be some sort of composite material, but um, yeah, it smells good. I always like to smell guitars. I don't know why. Why is that? It's kind of weird. Um, Wow, how about this? All right, I'm just gonna uh, do this. Like this here. Wow, how about that? <laughs> so the idea with this is you're supposed to be able to just take the neck off and put it in a backpack. How cool is that? And it is a mini guitar too, which, which is awesome. Oh, sorry, I'm just bashing my mic on the guitar here. So my, my first impression of the build quality on this, uh, it, is, it is really nice. I would say this is very similar to say a Sigma guitar, which I like Sigma guitars a lot. Now I haven't read the instructions by the way, I'm not that sort of guy normally, but uh, there's a little, there's a little Duvalaki in here. It looks like this just should go straight back. I may have to loosen the string slightly. Oh, there's a little, oh, how about this? Wow. All right, I think I'm gonna um, loosen the strings here. Let's have a look at the headstock. Oh, cool. How cool is this? So it looks great. It looks really good. I'm just going to loosen these a little bit. Make sure I don't wreck anything. All right, so it just clicked back into place. And I guess now all I have to do is really just turn this. Oh yeah, up until it gets flush against the uh, the pocket. Yeah, that's about right. Wow, this is great. What's this thing? Oh, okay. So this is a nut, a custom nut, essentially. So the strings don't fall off every time and turn into a mess. So that's a that's a great piece of engineering. Uh, let me grab. Let me grab this little tuner. This is cool. Let me let me know what you think of this. Well, it's only half a step out. This is this is all right. Now I don't play a lot of acoustic anymore, and I, I don't own one, so this is uh, this feels really good. 
tuners feel pretty good. I'm going to tighten up the G. Little uh, tuners, maybe slightly loose in terms of tension. Spit out. Now I don't know if you have to wait for the neck to to kind of settle. Uh, I, I'm tipping no. And what I'll do, I'll move my shirt mic down a little bit. Actually plays pretty good. <laughs> Dylan says he just built a guitar right in front of us. Magician. Hashtag magician. So there, there it is. How cool is this? I'm, uh, I'm pretty impressed. I, I'm shocked at how great it actually... How easy it went together. I, I thought for sure I was going to make a mess. I didn't look at, uh, at the instructions. <laughs> um, yeah, wow. So that's all I had to tighten on the back was this thing. It's like a... A big screw and it's got strap locks as well and it looks like I could be wrong I think it's got a I think it's got a pickup let's uh let's have a plug in let's see if this works I don't know if it's a pickup system or not should we uh, should we plug it in let's give it a go Looks like it is. This is gonna be cool. Has the action? The action's great. <laughs> mm. Now I can't hear what you're hearing through the actual sound card. You're gonna be hearing a mix of this mic and the guitar. Um, out of tune. I expected this because uh, when you when you unfold a guitar usually the, the tuning is probably not going to be the best and it's got new strings so uh, how does that how does that sort of sound? This goes out to Ryan who, uh, who has just joined the stream here. I don't know where my picks are gone but uh, this is his favorite song, his favorite groove. For a travel guitar, that's pretty sweet. I've never played one of these before. I've seen so many right-handed travel guitars, those little ones without the body. Like they're just almost like a neck with a, a piece of wood through here as well. Um, but never one like this. This is, this is really cool and you can, fold it, <laughs> you can fold it up and put it in the bag. That's so funny. Sounds pretty good, it's nice and chiming. <laughs> Steve, welcome mate. 5 a.m. in New Jersey.
All right, so it stayed in tune pretty well uh, after the first play test. That was pretty. It's pretty cool. Like, uh, and it actually feels. What's it got? It's got Grovers. How about that? So they definitely haven't skimped on, um, you know, on the, on the parts. Look, someone asked earlier how much this is. It turned up and I plugged it in. Well, it turned up earlier and I, I plugged it in just now. I haven't checked the, the stuff about it. So um, whenever I do the video, I'll put links in and all that kind of stuff. But uh, there we go. The first unfoldable unfold acoustic guitar. Wouldn't be the first, but this is, this is really cool. Not long ago, I nearly bought a... Uh, Sigma and it felt very much the same It's a beautiful sound. I really like it. I don't look like I said, I don't know how it's coming through the Through the wireless system into I don't know what the pickup systems like I, I I'm tipping it's it's all passive. I Can't see anything so odds are it's part of the bridge uh, It doesn't look like there's any other indication of anything to turn or no, so it's a it's a completely passive pickup, but that's fine. Like, that's better. It means you don't have to get in there with a nine volt, hopefully, and try to change something. Oh, I can see some light, uh, cables in there actually. So this model number is the OF four two zero L L for lefty. I'm pretty impressed, and it's called the overhead. I like that. It's like you know the overhead compartment. See, so it handles the percussive stuff. Reading six in lines comment there. I'm not exactly sure uh, <laughs> what that means. I'm not sure the body is big enough to hide my stash. Do you mean like uh, stomach? <laughs> I'm not too sure what that means. That's funny. Starts around seven to eight hundred bucks. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Like I said, I'm not 100% certain of the price. I'm not 100% certain on the links, uh, but I will be when I do the video. So there's not a whole lot of backlog. I've actually been able to get through a lot of stuff. Um, Guitar Search Saturday, 100% uploaded and ready to go for Saturday. Uh, maybe the best shop ever. So uh, I would highly recommend checking it out. A uh, place we went to in Copenhagen, just unbelievably good. I would definitely... How can you wear a jumper in this heat? Yeah, it is hot outside. So for those who don't know, my place stays at like 14 degrees all year round. It's always cold. <laughs> Uh, unless I have the windows and all that open, but I'm keeping them closed because it's just one of those things. I prefer to sort of not let the place get too hot. Otherwise, it's like an oven. But yeah, it's just, it's always cool in here. How's the intonation? I haven't uh, checked the tuning intonation or anything, but uh, if you missed the start of the stream, I literally just clicked it together, tuned it up, and I was ready to go. Uh, it was it was pretty surprising. You should play more acoustic. Thanks, John. I used to play a lot of it when I for the first couple of years. Uh, I think a big part of my attack on an electric guitar came from playing lead on acoustic uh, for at least a couple of years. There, I was never a really strong rhythm player. That kind of happened. It became better over the years, but uh, I used to be able to just, you know, just play all the same stuff. Acoustic's great also if you do play lead on it. A lot of people say, oh, you shouldn't bend on it. I say play whatever you like on it, but it also helps you play clean on, a, on electric guitar.
Thanks, Ryan. Cheers, man. Yeah, it sounds good. So one of the things we've got coming up as well, we're finally doing the live, or not live gig, but I'm going to do a gig with uh, Ryan, Rick, Dom, and if Drew, Richo, and a few of the other guys as well, and piece that together and put up a, like a live jam, uh, which should be awesome. So I was going to stream it, but streaming is really limiting with my setup. So I'm going to get like five or six cameras, or at least four, and just have multiple camera angles play some live music and take the best bits and and upload it and i've got some really cool ideas for that video coming up as well uh and i'm not i'm not going to spoil it yet but uh yeah stay tuned we're going to do it on the 2nd of december so odds are it will go up probably the that following weekend uh coming up after that and it'll yeah it should be fun it'll be at the place we jam out a lot but we're doing it at a different time of the day with some organized musos with no rehearsal no anything we just get the, get there and kick off a groove and play because that's what the jams are all about none of this pre pre-rehearsed stuff just get in there and see what happens so it should be good i don't have an acoustic anymore says kevin i didn't either mate i haven't had one for a long time <laughs> this is uh this is my first uh this, uh this is my only acoustic guitar so uh yeah Hey, 60 in line, you madman. Thanks, mate. <laughs> send my camper back. I tell you what, for sending me 20 bucks, I'll send you a pack of free uh, free camper presets if you already own a camper. I'm more than happy to do that. I'll send you some of my, all of my patches, mate. You can have them. Um, wow, thank you so much, mate. It, that's insane. I, I don't expect that. And yeah, if you've got any questions or if I can help you with anything, mate, just let us know, all right? That's uh, that's crazy. I think that might be the donation of the close to the yeah. I think twenty bucks might be the new the new. Uh, that's the balling amount of money. That I don't think I've ever received that before. Thank you. Uh, cool. It's good. It's got a nice acoustic. Oh, that's Ryan. I already read that. Thanks, mate. Uh, I hope I make it as a musician so I can afford air conditioning in Australia. <laughs> Yeah, if you live in Melbourne, you only need it a few, like four months of the year, I reckon. Steve says that we're going to do a subscriber hangout anytime soon. Yes, we will. There'll definitely be one this month, so uh, hang in there. We've got the Summit one coming up on Sunday, so probably the following weekend. I might even make it the Saturday, so uh, yeah, there'll definitely be one this month. So yeah, this plays pretty good. There's a little bit of buzz. But it could just be me too. So thanks again, Six in Line. That's that's crazy. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> welcome, dude. No, I got nothing. All right. Well, if I ever sell the Kemper, you're the first one I'll I'll contact about it. How about that? Yeah, I wanted to do a, a live stream hangout a couple of weeks. Well, I've been sick since I got back. I literally had bronchitis and a cold. <laughs> so a lot of the videos you've seen, I was lucky enough to shoot most of them before I got really sick. Uh, I was about four days where I was okay and then it hit me again. So um, yeah, it's just one of those weird sort of, 
I had to postpone a few videos and I let stuff was starting to back up like crazy here too. Uh, Stuart, hey Stuart, how are you man? I just did an acoustic with Dr. Rick yesterday. It was wonderful. Yeah, he's a great acoustic player. No doubt about that. Uh, Robert says, uh, new to your channel, an old collector, love uh, anything that plays well from Canada. Thanks, Robert. I'm the same, man. I, I'm not, I couldn't care less what it, you know, what it is in terms of brand or as long as it plays and sounds good, I'm happy with that. My, my um, finger style is strong in some ways. There's certain riffs I play a lot that I'm all right when I play finger style. And then there's other things I can, I want, I know what I'm trying to do in my head, like what I was just trying to do before didn't sound anything quite like what I was actually anticipating. As long as you get the snare going, you're good. That. You make it fit around that. Yeah. You know you're a songwriter when you just stick around G and then you play that and C a B in there over the G. <laughs> it's all part of the same chord. It just sounds impressive. Uh, suggestions for an acoustic reverb pedal, something cheap around 70 bucks. Um, all right, in terms of reverb, I'd probably say check out some Donna stuff. That would be kind of like the only reverb pedal that, uh, in terms of brands that are around that price, that's Probably the only brand I could think of that, and maybe Kalen make a reverb pedal as well. The Kalen ones are really wet sounding, which might not be what you're after, but um, I think there's a Kalen and Eno make one as well. I think Eno also make another, it's just E N O, make another one, which is pretty cool. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I can't quite recall the name of it off the top of my head, but um, Donna's pretty reliable. I, I reckon they're arguably one of the best inexpensive pedal companies out there. They might copy a lot of other stuff, but they might be like the same or they might, you know, as a lot of other brands and whatever else. But I think price wise, you're gonna have a hard time beating Donna. I mean, if anyone in the chat has some suggestions as well for something under that amount of money, um, feel free to, to chime in. But uh, I know Donna makes some and I, I would probably say that either them or Kalen would be my two choices. I can't think off the top of my head if uh, if Joyo make any reverb pedals anymore. I don't recall ever using one. I may have, but I, I'm not too sure. So uh, yeah, we'll wait, and, wait and see what the, uh, the chat says here. Glenn from Southern Indiana, welcome. And Steve, why are you up so early, man? 5 a.m. Aren't you retired? What's going on? <laughs> That doesn't sound fair. Must be the soldier in you, eh? <laughs> hard, hard habit to beat. Happy Memorial, is it Memorial Day in the US? Is that what it was? Or oh, Veterans Day, I always get that confused. I'm not, you know, I'm not up to, we don't. All right, Ryan says, Shane, I'm actually building an acoustic board as we speak. I've got a rehearsal tomorrow, I just realized uh, that while watching this. Oh, cool. Acoustic board. That'd be interesting to sort of find out. We should find out about it. I've never really thought about that before. I thought acoustics just go straight to the board. No, no, no. I figured you could probably get some compression and possibly some reverb, maybe delay even. I'm not too sure. All right, so uh, Lefty Mike says, am I still using the fret uh, zealot? Uh, if so, is it helping? So I was gonna sell the guitar that that was on. So I took it off and it, I destroyed it. So it, it is no longer. It was working fine though. Like 
The problem was after a, about a week, the glue hardens on the fretboard. So you'll find that if you, uh, if you leave it on for any length of time, which was probably, I don't know, about two months in my case, maybe, um, getting it off is impossible. I mean, look, it's possible, but there's no easy way of doing it. You literally just have to destroy it. So, um, yeah. Ah, Veterans Day in the US. There we go, Steve. Yeah, I knew it was one of those, so cool stuff. Uh, no one knows you when you're down and out. Oh, you know what? I used to play a bit of that. If I got the chord progression up, I'd be able to play it. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can... I'll, I'll probably butcher it a little bit, but... Let's have a listen. I think I'm slightly out of tune too. Yeah, it's just gone out a bit here. This is fun, watching a bald guy tune an acoustic guitar. I reckon it's held up pretty well. For new strings, it's just slightly out everywhere, so they've just got to stretch in a bit. I'm a southpaw and learned to play right-handed since uh, no one told me I could flip stuff around. Uh, you might like some of the blue stuff I've collected just for fun. Oh, nice stuff, Robert. Cool, man. Uh, how was Rick Beto at GitCon? Uh, I only spoke to him briefly, man. He was... I, I don't know. He, I think he knew who he wanted to work with and, and that was it. He, he seems like a nice enough guy, but... Um, yeah, I think he may have kept to himself a fair bit. But I guess we're all a bit guilty of that too, you know. There's some people that just don't make much of an effort to interact with each other and that's just the way that it was. There are no sh shortcuts to learning the fingerboard. Yeah, but the good thing about that Fred Zellett thing, I'll, I'll give it credit, is the fact that uh, if you're a visual person like I am, if you see something and hear it, then it makes learning a little bit easier but what it doesn't teach you is how to use those notes you know like you can teach someone that you can teach someone that scale but actually putting it to use is a whole different thing so just as a concept you know it helped me kind of get around some of the Dorian stuff I've been noodling around with that you know just messing around with all, all this different stuff but uh, yeah, it doesn't really teach you how to apply it. It's just, it's, there it is, these are the notes. Um, play around until you get something that, sound, that sounds good. I've got to say too, actually, the, the frets feel good. It's actually a pretty sweet guitar. I like trying these live sort of unboxing videos from time to time because uh, I'm getting a few other guitars coming through over the next month or so. And I've had a lot of people say, oh, I wonder what they're shipped like and how well they perform straight out of the box. So this is a good test. Oh, what was that? Something went out of tune. Oh, the string's not... <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't strung the guitar properly. I'm like, see how they put the, uh, the actual part, the string above the one below it. Yeah, that's not the way you string a uh, guitar. The string should always go under. Anyway. Hey, Quentin, how are you, mate? Lonnie and... Lonnie, I went to college in Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo, Michigan, huh? I've been right near there when I lived in uh, Torch Lake, Michigan. We had a big drive and we went up to uh, uh, Petoskey, I think, and I remember listening to radio stations out of Kalamazoo. The string spacing looks bad at the nut. Oh, it's, yeah, good, good call. Look at this. So that's what slipped out. How about that? There we go. 
That's better. Now it's back to normal. I should have probably have checked that. It's more, maybe what was buzzing slightly. What a great live stream, huh? Just tuning a guitar. All right. Still digging the monster from the Black Lagoon poster on the wall? Uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite old movies and one of my favorite pinball machines of all time. Actually, in my other room, I've got a framed back glass from the pinball machine. I, I love that pin pinball machine. It's, uh, it's really great. Uh, yeah. Can you imagine how much further we've progressed if we had all the tools that are available today back when we started learning? Um, yeah, I think that's why, like, generally every generation improves with things, whether it's uh, computer stuff or, or I don't know if I'd agree mu musically speaking, but yeah, there's definitely uh, all the learning tools now are, are crazy. There's so much out there. Anyway, there we go. Pretty cool. Hopefully that doesn't make too much noise, turning that off. So yeah, you just heard the little wireless pack going into it as well. I, I love it. I, for the, so for those who just joined, that's what we took the, uh, the acoustic guitar out of. <laughs> so there's the size comparison. It fit easily in there. The strings didn't get tangled. Uh, I can't wait to actually do a proper video of this thing. I, I think it's, it's pretty sweet. And the bag's great. It reminds me of a pedal train in terms of uh, the quality of it. So that's cool. Thanks, Matthew. Welcome to the live stream. Has the tightening knob on the back loosened at all? No. No, nah, not at all. You've got to want to loosen it, you know, like um, to get it to sit flush was quite the, you know, you have to apply a bit of pressure, at least where I had the strings, because uh, it locks into it locks into a mechanism first. Um, so it sort of like spring locks in and then you just turn that thing to get it flush and it basically uh, puts this big, you know, like on a mic stand, they've got the the threaded part at the end, it's kind of like, that's what it looked like. It looked like a mic stand end that it was screwing into it. So it's not, it's not gonna move anywhere. That's, uh, nah, that's not moved at all. I like it. I like it a lot. That's, that's actually pretty sweet. <coughs> Excuse me. Good morning from uh, Dearborn, Michigan. Wow, it's the Michigan uh, club today. This is awesome. Yeah, I lived there in 1999 when I was 19 years old. 18 to 19. Well, I turned, I turned 19 while I was there. Rowan pedals on eBay are excellent, like Donna. Oh, yeah, Rowan too, absolutely. I totally forgot about that, that brand. They're essentially, like, they're all probably out of the same factory. Um, Rowan stuff is, is fine as well, someone was asking earlier. I'm from uh, Port Huron. I don't know where that one is, actually. Cool. David Melvin from Michigan, huh? <laughs> I was in Melbourne in Florida, too. All right, ha having the tools, I don't know. There's plenty of old school guys who are bloody good players. I'm not sure what the excuse is. I still suck <laughs> playing after all this time. Yeah, I mean, look, it just, it all, it still all comes down to how much time you put into it. Re realistically and how uh, and how you learn you know if you're learning stuff you don't want to play it's a it's a task and a challenge but if you're um, if you're playing and learning stuff you want to play it's a lot easier I think a lot of people make the mistake of learning stuff they're not interested in and that really sort of stunts their development because they don't want to put time into it uh, someone had another question here where was it how do I think it would take uh, air travel? It would be fine. The way it was packed in that bag, <laughs> the bag's really good. So if you've ever picked up a pedal train pedal board, it's better, it's thicker than that. 
It's padded along the ed outer edge as well. So you've got a really, like, it's hard, probably, it doesn't do it justice, but it's padded here. You've got a big piece of foam sitting here. Um, and I like the fact that the neck has its own pocket. It just goes into here and straight down. And the headstock, it's like carved out for the headstock. It's probably really hard to see on this little webcam, but it kind of, uh, it fits in there pretty nice. I, I think it would be fine if you were to put this in the overhead of a plane. It, no problems at all. Would you put it underneath the plane? No. <laughs> oh, the Trio pedals. Yeah, I, I always wanted to try. I nearly bought one. This was last time I was in Florida. I tested one out at the Guitar Center in, I think it's Sarasota. And it was just, I don't know. I, didn't, I couldn't work it out in time to make a decision on it. So I didn't buy one, but. You know, I think they're pretty handy tools for jamming. You know, strum a few chords, it plays a groove and you can just noodle over it or play other chords, all that kind of stuff. When you do a review, can you find out if it's a solid top? Absolutely, I'll get the specs. Um, I don't often do acoustic video, so I need to make sure I get all the, <laughs> all the stuff right about it. Kevin, welcome. He's from Warrigal, awesome. I've just bought a Blackstar HT5 210 Anniversary Edition after watching one of your old posts. Oh, that's a great amp. That is such a great amp. Uh, HT5, was it, a, was it a five or a 10? I remember doing the video of that. Was it only five watts? That amp was loud. And I remember it, it just sounded unreal. Like that was probably the first Blackstar amp that blew me away. So uh, yeah, congrats. That's, that video must be seven or eight years old now. At, at least that old. Uh, what songs do I most enjoy singing? Um, probably my own stuff. Just because it, I, I can't, I can most likely make it sound kind of like how it did when I laid the vocal down. Uh, I'm not really good at replicating a lot of vocals from albums. Um, I just sort of sing stuff my own way, especially blues. I like blues. It's just, you know, familiar now. So, um, but yeah, we're going to do this live gig coming up pretty soon with a couple of guys you've seen on the channel, and a few guys you haven't as well. And uh, you'll hear Rick and I busting out some songs and Ryan and this other guy, Dom, who's a gun as well. Unfortunately, Brian can't make it. He's, he had a prior commitment, but if we moved it any other week, we couldn't get the drummers. So we, <laughs> we, we've kept it and Brian's just gonna have to miss out. Is it just an acoustic or does it have a pickup? Yeah, so if you scroll back, what you were hearing was it plugged in. Well, I, actually, I shouldn't say that. Initially on the video, you were hearing it through this. And then right after that, I plugged in the into my sound card. So you were hearing the pickup. It's a passive pickup. From what I can tell, I haven't looked inside the hole, uh, but it looks like it's a passive pickup, which is fine for a travel guitar. And 90% of what you just heard a few minutes ago was the, the pickup and probably mixed with a little bit of this. Yeah, that um, HT5 is a really nice, really nice amp. Uh, I, I would, they, you know, for a five watter, it, I, I can't believe they're five watts. I really thought they were more than that. For some reason, I thought they were close to a Blues Junior in terms of output power, but um, yeah, very, very cool. I'm intrigued by the very woody looking Les Paul. The Paul, I hope you get to review it. Blackstar amps, for the most part, are pretty good products. Yeah, I've had mixed experience with Blackstar amps. I, I don't like a lot of their new ones, and this is just me being honest. I haven't heard one in a mix that I liked. Uh, in terms of their 40 watt combos and above, they're all really like bass heavy and have no mids. So they kind of have this scoop sound, which doesn't really work great in the mix. Uh, but I've only heard two, <laughs> so those two, I haven't been I haven't been impressed by them in a live mix. I would take a lot of other amps over those for for playing out live. But they make a lot of great smaller amps. Whether it's home practice amps, or five watt is awesome. That one we're talking about before as well. They make a couple of ones with like digital effects as well. You know, as a practice amp, they're great. 
Um, I'm just not, I'm yet to hear one that really blows my mind in, in the context of a live mix. But I, I, like I said, I've only heard a couple of H. I've heard the 40 watt one. Um, I haven't heard it with pedals either. I've just heard its drive channel in the mix and it was Scoop City. <laughs> it might've been the way the guy had it dialed in too. So I'm not too sure. I think actually Ben said he owned one who was here earlier. I don't know if he's still here, but uh, he, he changed over to a Supro and his tone's never been better. Give us a Bob Dylan impersonation. I'll give it a go. I'll, I'll sing something. Uh, blues is great, but I think it's hard to make it fresh. Uh, yeah, I guess that's the thing. You've got to... That's why I like dudes like uh, Dr. John back here. I don't know if anyone knows Dr. John is New Orleans or New Orleans piano player. You know, when he does a blues, it sounds completely different. It's got New Orleans funk all over it. You know, it's awesome. So... Uh, it's about, I guess, taking your, taking all your influences and turning it into a 12 bar. And that's why Ryan's great too. We we're going to do some funk stuff hopefully coming up. And it, it, you know, these aren't traditional riffs, but it works for blues. And that's, that's the best part about it. It's trying to put your own little piece on it, you know, as opposed to just playing the same old tired feels. I say tired feels because if you've ever been to a jam night, all you hear is the same stuff. All you hear is the same stuff. It doesn't matter where in the world you go, the, the standard of it can vary, but you hear a lot of the same stuff. So it, it's cool to be able to um, kind of try to do something a little different. Well, blues rock, you know, I, I, that's the great thing about blues rock. It just takes those blues feels, turns it into something that may be slightly more interesting. Any news on the G Gibson guitars coming back to Australia? Uh, any news from, uh, no, nah. I don't know anything about that. Do I have a Desert Island guitar and a Desert Island amp? Uh, yeah, look, my amp tastes change, you know, over the course of a week or a month or whatever. But, you know, I, I love my Blues Deluxe. I also love my Marshall as well, which is actually in the other room. But it just depends on if I can bring a pedal with me or not. <laughs> if I can bring a pedal, I, I, might take the, I might take the Fender, but I don't know, the, I, I just love simple amps now. The, the Marshall's great. The Fender's cool. The Bandits are still great as well. So like, you know, I don't know. I, maybe if I had my ideal amp, it would probably be, I miss my Super Reverb to some extent. I just don't miss moving it around. When that sounded at its best, it was a hard amp to beat. Uh, I really like a deluxe reverb as well. You know, the 22 watters, I think they're a real, really great amp. That would be another amp that I could own and be happy with at some point down the track too. <clears throat> Mac Ribbonac, yep. He's the man, he's one of my favorites. Uh, if you haven't heard Dr. John, look him up. Just unbelievable. There's an album called Creole Moon. Just super cool. Actually, a lot of them are good. Uh, Salvador says, have I seen the Anitons video on valve slash tube amp 6v6 versus EL3084s? No. I really watch too many of their videos anymore. I, I find them just too long. Uh, heard Jay Beck, oh, uh, Jeff Beck once, guy says he, he'll never wash his ear again after hearing that. He enjoyed, oh, cool. Uh, what would you recommend as a bit of an affordable noise suppressor? Uh, okay, so there's plenty of those. If you just want to kill the single coil buzz, as in like just a gate, if you want to gate it, Kalen make one called The Noise. Joyo make one as well. Uh, it's called The Gate of Khan. <laughs> uh, those two probably the, are the easiest ones. It's one control uh, and it works. So they would be my two. In, in terms of inexpensive ones, if you want to spend more, I said affordable. Yeah, so those two would be the ones to go. That's from Monty. How much is Gibson SG standard in Australia? You know what? I'm not really too sure. I, I, I haven't checked. Look, prices of this stuff. Um, why is my mouse not working? Oh, really? I was going to bring up a web page, but my mouse has stopped working. Oh, here we go. It's back. Oh, it's kind of half back. Now, let me move this. 
Let me, uh, let me see. Well, I'll bring this up so we can all see it. With my fancy new streaming thing I've got going on. Hang on. All right. Let's, uh, let's swap over to this. Let's see if this works. I haven't tested this for a while. Hey, here we go. As the live chat fills up. So I just typed in Gibson SG and on the right over here, we have a few. We have Muso's Corner, $2,099. Uh, that actually sounds pretty reasonable. I, I'm, I'm kind of shocked. I think maybe just inherently they're a whole lot cheaper than Les Paul's. I didn't kind of realize that. So there you go. How about that? How about this new little, uh, new little picturing picture thing I got going on? Yeah, so that doesn't seem unreasonable. 18, oh, 1849 was reverb.com, so that'll be just some ad that gets you to look at their website, and then when you get there, they'll all be vintage ones that cost 10 grand. But um, yeah, 2379, it looks like 2379 is probably the close to the average price. Um, which would work out roughly to 1800 US dollars. That's just quick math off the top of my head. I could be wrong. Judd says, Dr. John is a hugely underrated artist. He's amazing. Absolutely. I've been listening to him for years and years and years. Uh, I, I, my first job I ever had, I worked with a guy, a surfer guy. He was a bit of a older hippie guy. He was a, he's a dude, man. I can't remember the guy's name, unfortunately. And uh, he got me into Dr. John. I remember listening to, we got a radio station here called Triple J and they had, they, they used to, back in, the, back in the 90s, the late 90s, they used to have really great, uh, what was it? Yeah, it was, it was the 90s because it was the same year that I went to the US for the first time because that's the first job I saved up and went overseas from. And um, this sort of uh, great song from Dr. John, there was an album called Anuther Zone, which is still one of my favorites. I'm like, man, this guy's awesome. He goes, mate, wait till you hear his original, one of his oldest albums. Uh, and it was a song called John the Conqueror. Uh, the album name is The Sun, The Moon, and The Herbs, I'm pretty sure. Or is it Black John the Conqueror? I can't, can't recall, but either way, it's, a, it, it's a, just a great album. And he goes, I'll give you the CD. And I heard it, and uh, it was just, I was hooked. I got nearly... I'm not, I haven't got all of his albums, but I've got a lot of his albums actually on physical media because Dr. John's the man. He also did a tribute to a few other guys. Uh, Duke Ellington was one of his other ones uh, that he, he did a tr tribute to. One of the funkiest albums of all time. If you look up, just l look him up and scan through some of his albums on Spotify and find the ones you like because it's really great. Uh, all right, so here's a good question. Matthew says, do you have an opinion on what you think the single best live band act slash show you've ever seen? Uh, atmosphere and the music. James Brown would be one of the ones that I've, I've seen that blew me away. Uh, James Brown's show was fantastic. Great musicians. Um, just a great, great audience participation, all that kind of stuff. Um, also, Dr. John. Dr. John was one of the first guys I saw live that blew me away. Up until that point, I'd, I'd never experienced that at a gig. And it was a, at a really good pub atmosphere sort of gig to it, placed here in St Kilda. And the rhythm section came out, two guys, two black American guys, started laying down this groove like I'd never heard it in my life. And the mix was awesome. The sound engineer in the room had it, had it dialed in. It sounded so good. And they just, they just went. And it was one of the best experiences. And it was only 60 bucks when I, when I saw them that year. And it was unreal. So in terms of uh, someone that blew me away, Dr. John blew me away. Chris Kane, who is here, blew me away as well. Just if you're a guitar player and you, you don't know him, I, I reckon watching him is probably like watching any of the greats. You know, they're, they're masters of their craft. He can sing his ass off. He can play great. Just phenomenal player. <clears throat> Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> David, thanks, man. I appreciate that. So I've been working out for two years officially now, and I, I posted, I got a little vlog channel called uh, Shane D Vlogs, as in D W E. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I posted my first online pro progress picture, which is something I don't normally do, and I won't be doing another one probably for another two years, but uh, nearly 40 years old, you know, and, and I thought before I get to 40, I want to try and try to almost get fit if I can. And uh, yeah, so I, I put a video up about that, but I won't be doing that on this channel. Thank you, David. <laughs> I really like your videos on a budget gear. Uh, greetings from India. Thanks for that. I appreciate that. Uh, we've got a couple more coming up. I, I've actually, I've still got stuff I still haven't filmed from the part of that series. Uh, we have some more pickups over here as well. So uh, yeah, we've got a couple of other videos that will be part of that series. So hang in there. There's going to be more coming up. You were hooked, a doctor hooked. <laughs> yeah, Dr. John's so good. I, I can't stress that enough. There's something in there for everybody. You might not like his, some people might not like his traditional New Orleans stuff. Some people might not like his funk stuff, which is hard to believe. But if you're into blues and you like good music, doc, the doc is the man. He's super cool. <clears throat> you live in St. Kilda. No, I don't live in St. Kilda. First show I saw was Elvis when I was six. Wow, that's cool, man. Oh, that was my neck. You know, in Alabama, two guys shot each other over the discrepancy over James Brown's height. <laughs> uh, it's so funny, but it isn't. That's just sad. Why, why would people get into that sort of argument? That makes no sense. That's hilarious. <laughs> My urban exploration, welcome. I'm not going to uh, repeat that, but I'll leave it on screen there so people can see it. When am I coming to Brisbane? Uh, I, I don't know, I'd like to. I'm actually probably going to move out of Melbourne at some point. I'm kind of sick of it. It's too busy. It's just, I don't know, I'm a bit over it. Yeah, in terms of any other artists that I've seen that really blew me away, Buddy Guy was great. Like I saw Eric Clapton when he came out in 2007. And it was I paid like $400 for second front row tickets and it was terrible. Um, the good part about his show was Steve Jordan on drums. Pino, uh, not Pino Palladino, um, Willie Weeks on bass and, um, and Derek Trucks. But it was a horrible show. And not long after that, I saw Buddy Guy and Buddy Guy just killed it. His vibe, his band were great. Great dynamics. Still feeling it, you know. Just a whole different caliber of showmanship. And the Clapton show felt so generic. And he was my favorite player for years. And after that, I, I went right off him. It was a bit of a sad state of affairs. I could hear a lot of his playing in my own. And I wanted to completely change my style. It was just a real shock seeing him live. It was terrible. Hmm. <clears throat> But people loved it, you know. I guess it depends what you were you were after. I wanted to hear him play and to hear everyone else do guitar solos all night wasn't why I was there. So, yeah, it was a little disappointing. I saw John Mayer as well back here. Where is it? Here. He's, uh, he was great. Really great player. Here we go. Matthew Black says, For my 40th birthday in 2005, I was the fittest I ever got. Six... Uh, kilometer runs seven days per week. Wow, 100 sit-ups per day. Been downhill ever since then. I can get back into it, man. I think once you've done it, it's easy to get back into it. I found after about three months, I I felt like I'd be. I was already back to where I was when I trained years before for uh, six months back then, which wasn't that much better. But you know, you you get back into it easier. <clears throat> It's funny, I posted that video not knowing what to expect and it got a, quite a lot of traffic for a video on a channel with no subscribers. So um, yeah, it was good to hear everybody's input. I just think it's good to balance out your day. Like you don't wanna just do one thing, whether it's work or computer or whatever, you gotta, you gotta mix it up. It helps you in more ways than one. Uh, I think like for me, like my outlet has been guitar for years, but it's also going to the gym or going traveling or something. So there's things that I, I like to do that are 
help me unwind. And I, for some reason, moving heavy shit around is, is good. <laughs> Prince just freaked me out. Saw him twice in 1992. That's from HK. Cool. I never got to see him, unfortunately. I, I would have loved to. What a great, good, uh, great musician. Just insane. I don't know if there's anyone else on this wall that I've seen in person. Uh, no. No, there's not. At least I don't think so. But anyway. Uh, how long were you playing before you got up on stage? Probably three years. Uh, I can't really recall. It would have been around then because I I was playing like um, Dave Matthews band. It's not, not, not like a lot of that stuff but I was, I was working on playing like different kinds of music mostly on acoustic and then once the blues bug got in I was like well that's what I want to play so I got an electric guitar and the rest was that so I think I put a lot of work in over a short amount of time uh, and I went through a couple of instructional videos which are which is still a lot of what you hear today um, I think some of those riffs are still ingrained in my playing um, but yeah, I just think that if the most important thing is to understand how the progression works if you're going to play. I'll give you one other tip too. Like, um, if you, this is just through the shirt mic. If someone's doing this, just as a, you know, a chunk of chunk of kind of blues or bumper bumper, actually, that one is. Um, play something else, you know. And then when they're not playing that, you can play it. But try to play... Try to play to an album and compliment what's going on. And then if someone's soloing, then play the riff or, you know, or the groove. That's probably my suggestion. that blew me away when I watched him play live was this Australian guy or half New Zealand guy called um, Ray Beadle. I've spoken of him before. If you look him up on YouTube, just check him out. <coughs> it's like Beetle with a, a D in the middle. Beetle. Just unbelievable. I, I'd put him up there with probably you know, like Derek Trucks in terms of just watching him going, wow, this guy's on another level. He's unbelievably good <clears throat> how do you do those videos with your tube amps and not get complaints from your neighbors especially when you're in a flat um, so there's a couple of different ways I, I record and I'll show you a little bit of this because this is make more sense hang on So if we head over here, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna talk and leave that there while I grab a drink. So this white unit up here is the, um, is that gonna focus? No? There we go. So that white unit is called the Two Notes Torpedo Live. And what it does, you unplug your speaker from your amplifier and you go into that and essentially that's a load box mixed with um, like a speaker replacement impulse response. So if I turn it on, you'll see it says Swamp Thing right now because I've got a Swamp Thing speaker and that's the profile of the actual sp speaker mic'd up. And so this thing basically captures the sound of your amp, much like what, how the Kemper works in a way except it's a speaker impulse response only. And it can also do microphone placement and microphone type, but you can also basically create your own impulse responses that are references of whatever microphone you put in front of your amp. Now, I also pick my times. If I'm recording an amp loud, I make sure no one else is around and I, I know everybody's schedule. <laughs> and I'm, I'm very respectful of someone's home I, I don't use that a lot um, and that's why I got the Kemper as well because 
I've essentially, the profiles you hear on my videos, except for the first time that I used it, all, it, it's all my own gear. So my amps with my favorite microphone, the favorite position, that's what this is giving you back. So um, I'm not always using the amp just loud in the, in the apartment. I, don't, I can't afford to do that all the time either. So this for pedal demos, and then I'll either use that or this for when I'm doing guitar stuff because it's indistinguishable. People say, oh, I can hear a difference. You can't hear a difference. Uh, if on, a, on you know, in the actual context of it just being recorded, if I didn't tell you which one was which, most people wouldn't know. Uh, so it's a convenience thing. And it also helps protect my ears using this as well. My, my setup's really simple. It looks elaborate, but you know, I just used the Two Notes Torpedo for a long time. And that's, so like I said, you, you, you're going into your amplifier and that just replaces the speaker. That's it. So uh, yeah, you can have the sound then coming through the studio monitors at any volume you like, which is really cool. So that's the, there you go. And then there's times where if I'm doing an amp demo, I'm doing an amp demo. I just pick my times. That's, that's just how it works. I just make sure I'm not doing it when I'm gonna kill anyone around me. I, I wouldn't want that either. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sonia, welcome. How many people we got here now, anyway? Must be a few. Hey, we got 58 people, cool. <clears throat> I don't know if I missed any other questions there. Let me have a quick look. We might be pretty much at the end. So uh, yeah, if you missed the if you missed the start, we did a, a quick unboxing slash setup of this acoustic, which came out of a square ba square bag. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it's a great little guitar. So uh, I can't wait to give this a shot. I'm gonna I might take it out and play it live a couple times too. See if I can get some live footage of how it sounds. Have I ever played any, uh, sorry, what is that? Revstar guitars. I don't think I have. <laughs> the Kemper looks complicated. Yeah, it, uh, look, it's not the easiest thing in the world. It, it, it's probably more complicated visually than it is to use. There's a lot of the stuff in there you just don't even need. It really depends on how you want to use it, but if you just want to capture your own gear and then be able to have that sound at, at, at a recall, just by turning a button, that's it's really simple for that. I think it's complication is if you want to use it in a way where you, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, <clears throat> bloody cough. Um, if you want to start using it with like the floor controller and all that kind of stuff, there's, then you have to have it set up for a live rig. It, it's probably not that hard, but you know, it, it becomes more complicated if you want to start using effects and you've got to learn it, how to use it a little bit. But for what I do, I just try to keep it really simple. Bit of reverb, bit of delay if I need it and that's it. Matthew says the commenting went away for a minute or so. No, it kept going. I didn't see it. Might have been, I'm not too sure. Sometimes on mobile phones, people say that the live chat doesn't always work, but I don't know. Oh, Revstar's are Yamaha's. Okay, no, I, I think I know the guitar you're talking about. Um, I don't know if they make lefties, so I don't think so. The neck on that thing looks really broad. Yeah, it feels like an acoustic. Well.
Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm enjoying it, i got to say. D-Walk says, thanks for the explanation on the two torpedo and the time scheduling for demos. I think I need to look at this torpedo so I can use my larger amps and not blow the neighbors away. Absolutely. So if you do buy one, um, <coughs> one of the things that you need is studio monitors or, or uh, headphones. I kind of recommend going studio monitors because headphones get fatiguing after a while and they don't really give you a sense of space. I kind of do, but they don't. I, I never really use them with headphones unless I really have to. Um, I, I sometimes even record at say 6 p.m. when I know other people are around and I'll use the, tw the two notes, but I've got my studio monitor monitors on low and it still sounds great. So uh, I would probably suggest, um, yeah, getting some studio monitors of any description, doesn't matter what they are, uh, and you, you can't really go wrong. It'll give you a much better representation of like where you want to put the mic and all that kind of stuff as well. There's another guy I used to listen to, Ronnie Earl. That's uh, off his instructional video. He used to have all of this really cool stuff where he'd go like. It's sort of really hard to do that, actually. Anything in the works with the GT100 soon? Uh, I nothing on. I oh, actually I have one more video coming up, which should be this week. Um, I got my hands back on the Mustang version two, so we did a comparison, the same preset on both amps. Um, I'm not going to give that away. You can you can watch that and see see what you think. But they've both got their strengths. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, do I like 12 strings acoustic and electrics? I don't ever remember playing one. Uh, no. I'm not a huge fan of the sound of them, to be honest. I, I, I can appreciate them when they're played well in context of a mix, but I, like on their own, they're not the most pleasing of instruments to me. I don't really like that oct octave sort of sound. Uh, and, and for me personally, I've play, I have played a couple over the years, and uh, actually a girlfriend of mine bought one years ago, and it was a 12-string, and we made it six pretty quick because it was too hard to tune, uh, yeah, it was just a little bit awkward. Uh, great guitar, actually. It was a Seagull. Seagull, a uh, Canadian-made one. Being a lefty, I still want to hang out with Shane and uh, have a pick up on his plucking <laughs> devices. Well, I'd love to do like a, a get-together thing, you know, like a uh, some sort of event with a couple of guys where we can all be there and have a jam and meet folks and that at some point. I reckon that'd be kind of fun. Speaking of the studio monitors with the Kemper, did you try plug it in maybe into FRFR cab? Just trying to think of what that is. <laughs> uh, how did it compare to the studio monitors? Uh, just let me know what you mean by that acronym. Sorry, I'm not too sure what that is. I can't think of it off the top of my head. So for those who are wondering um, about the sound of this thing plugged in, this is how it sounds plugged in. Ah, Chris is uh, looking and sounding good at 5 a.m. in Mobile, Alabama. I've been there. <laughs> Mobile's awesome. I kept calling it mobile because I didn't know it was mobile at the time. Uh, yeah, cool, cool little town. Alabama was surprisingly awesome. You know, I, I was shocked. The coastline there is some of the best I've ever seen in the world. I, I, I was shocked. 
Have I reviewed Lawrence uh, Petros pedals? Uh, I haven't, no. Any more budget uh, video videos in the works? Yes. Uh, I mentioned that just earlier. I've got a couple of videos I, I need to shoot. I've had the gear for ages and it's, just been, it's been sitting here. Um, and I kept getting pushed back, but I definitely want to do it. Do I take requests? Uh, look, I don't know a lot of covers anymore. Like, I really don't. There's only a few that I, I play regularly. I, I'm not an encyclopedia of, of sort of, <coughs> of songs, unfortunately. Uh, <coughs> Twelve strings need a really good setup done on them, more than just a six string. Yeah, you're, you're probably right about that. I think. Um, it doesn't take much for a 12 string guitar to sound out. And that's one thing that, you know, a lot of people don't realize is like, you know, if, if it's out of tune, it's like twice as bad almost, you know, so. Cheers folks, I got the only Coke I could get today was this 1.25 liter. Oh, flat response. Um, line the line six power cab. Uh, you know what I've done? And this is going to make an interesting video. The Fender Mustang actually has a, like a, you can turn off all the digital stuff and use it as a, as a powered box, basically. I know it's not a flat response one, but I plugged the Kemper into it and it sounded awesome. <laughs> it sounded really, really good. Hilariously good, actually. So this, <laughs> I'm probably doing a video about profiling an amp with the Kemper and then playing it through the, <coughs> the Mustang at some point. Oh, excuse me, guys. <coughs> that sucks. Am I using the Kemper? I, I do. Yeah, I used it for nearly every guitar video I, I shoot that isn't a pedal demo. I like it a lot. I'd love to actually try it with the acoustic as well. I wouldn't say I'm using it a lot, but I use it on like all, mostly when I do live streams, I use it a lot. Uh, although it's not plugged in, it's not um, on today because I didn't think I'd need it. Uh, and I use it for like, you know, testing electric guitars. And there's a, a few more electrics on the way coming up. Odds are I'll probably do the same thing. I'll use it for that as well. <laughs> Seeing that Coke just made me up, maybe get up to get a Coke. Coke is totally a drug. Yeah, it's pretty bad, hey. Who knows this song? Hint, the guy's on the wall behind me. I have a mate who owns a 12 string. He named it the cheese grater. It's a Robert Cray song actually. I've done it a little bit different. Uh, What's it called? Uh, I can hear a couple fighting I'm right next door. What's, that? What's the name of the song? Uh, Angra. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because of me. I think that. Oh, Strong Persuader might be the name of the song, actually. But it's, it's that tune. Great song. Man, Robert Cray has some of the most underrated music ever. He's such a great singer and some of his, even some of his new stuff is just awesome. Like Backdoor Slam, check out that song. If you haven't heard that, you'll listen to it like over and over again. It's really cool. <clears throat> Acoustic guitar and coffee. <laughs> Do some boom chicka boom.
Ah. Ah, I butchered that. I can't do that quite that quick. David says, can I have one of your Joyo amps? The red one would be okay. Uh, <laughs> I just got those actually a couple of weeks back. They're great. I'll tell you what, um, they're both great, but I, I love that, that Mesa Boogie one up there, the little uh, zombie. I think it's a beast. It sounds like my friend Studio 22, which is one of the best amps you can play. I, I love that thing. Is this live now? It is. Anytime you see the red dots in the title, those little circle things, uh, the, the stream's live. Anytime it's not, they're not. Take it easy, DMS. I find pure pineapple juice works much better on sore throats uh, than Coke. <laughs> I've actually got some in my fridge too, so. I don't like to overdo the the, the juice. Uh, it's uh, it's probably got more sugar than the, the Coke. But it, it's it, you're right, it does help. We're all a big thumbs up. Thanks, Sonia. Have I ever been to Halstead, Halstead I think, or Blues Alley in Chicago? I've been to Chicago. I've been to Chicago twice. Um, where have I been there once? Oh, that's a good question. I might have only been there once. I think I went to the airport once, uh, other, uh, one other time though. Um, really great, really great city. I got to play with uh, Sammy Fender <laughs> while I was there, which was awesome. Dude's kind of like a buddy guy. He's, he's sings three feet back from the microphone. Great vibe, the real deal, man. He, He's really welcoming, and <coughs> I got to I got to play pretty much for like an hour with the guy. Um, it was super cool. Chicago is a great town. I'd like to see more of it actually. Uh, I got to play with another guy who passed away unfortunately, John Jewell, who uh, he, he was a bit of a local um, guitar blues guy as well, and uh, yeah, lovely guy. I found out uh, I don't know maybe a, a year or so ago he passed away. I knew he was sick, but. Yeah, I've still got his picks that he gave me from 2008, so. Love the new Pure Salem. Thanks, yeah, it is a it is an absolute monster. I, like I was just saying earlier, I love the bridge pickup on it, it's great. Oh. What is it? Am I still using the Green Child Mr. Boost pedal? It sounded awesome in the video. Yeah, so with the Marshall, just as a volume boost. It's all it does, just push, push the drive channel even further. That's it. That's, that's kind of like my go-to pedal for that amp. If you've got a Marshall or a dirty amp, like a Supersonic 60 or 22 and you like the drive channel, um, that's a really cool pedal just for giving you a little bit more saturation and a slight volume boost. Uh, they can be used in a whole lot of different ways and volume pedals as well. But in terms of what I use it for, uh, just Marshall, that's it. If I need any boost, then that's all you really need. <clears throat> Robert from Iowa, welcome. Every time I see that, I think of lower. <laughs> Looks like an L, lowercase L. If I was to recommend a couple of beginner amps, what would I suggest? Well, it depends. Do you want something just for like practicing at home? Or, I mean, obviously that's what beginner amps are, but there's a, you know, or do you want something you could probably take out and play live at some point? Because uh, I, I would sort of just say, go for a Studio Pro 20, uh, Studio Pro, um, what are they called? 112s from PV. You can pick them up second hand for a hundred bucks and they're loud enough to gig with uh, and you can also just get a lot of different usable tones out of them at any volume so that would that would be cool um, look any of the digital modeling amps or boss katanas are pretty good all that kind of stuff as well 
if you need headphones, then find an amp with a headphone socket. Uh, there's also like smaller amps that I really love. Vox make this Pathfinder 15R. Well, they used to. It had a, it's a really small little practice amp, about 100 bucks as well, 110 bucks or something around there. Uh, really great tone, really simple amp to use, no digital effects and all that, but it had reverb and they were really nice. But you can go to the secondhand market first, uh, unless you really need to buy something new for a birthday present or something. Uh, you know, even the little Bugera V5 is a good little practice amp, but the tones you get out of it aren't gonna be as good as, or as flexible as say something like a digital modeling amp, like this little Moore one, which is really good too. But uh, I would sort of buy something that you could grow into and still use as you get better. So my suggestion would be get a secondhand PV. Uh, I don't think you can go too far wrong. Have fun guitar player says, what kind of guitar is this? This is the overhead. <laughs> this is a foldable, gu foldable guitar, believe it or not. If, for those who missed the start of the stream, we, we took this out of a square bag and we clunked the neck on, onto it and it worked. So, uh, yeah. Let me just uh, check something here. Oh, wow, an hour and 30 minutes, far out. All right, I didn't realize I was going for that long. I thought it must be getting close to an hour. I just want Brad Paisley's entire rig. <laughs> yeah, brown man. I, I wouldn't mind his chops. That's where I got stole that riff from. That's one of his. All right, guys, we might, um, what about Joyo amps for home use? Yeah, the thing with the Joyo amps is, at least most of them need a speaker box, right? You, you buy that whatever head you like, but you still need a speaker for it. So um, they do make a couple of different cabs as well. That would be a good choice, actually. You just try to find out what, whoever it is you're buying, buying it for, what kind of music they want to play. Because if they want to play metal, then you don't want to buy like a Fender voice stand. That's why I think the PVs are pretty good because they do everything. You can get like an 80s kind of sound out of it, 80s metal tone out of it, or you can get a, a good clean tone or a, a bluesy sort of sound. Um, you can get a bit of everything, but if you want a real hardcore kind of gent sound, then you, you, you don't really want to buy, you know, the stuff that I'm, I've got behind me. It's, it's not the right sort of amp. <clears throat> What's the action like on the acoustic? It plays great. I've been jamming on it now for a lot longer than I realized. It, cl it clipped together great and it feels fine. I said it reminded me of a Sigma guitar. This little like, little uh, sort of Dreadnought acoustic I played a little while back. I, I was so close to buying it. I'm hardly even hitting the strings too. It just, it's got a real nice chime. All right guys, I, I've been here an hour and a half now. I know some people have just joined, but I might, uh, might get a move on my throat starting to go kind of funky. I need to down some more Coke Zero. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyway, so stay tuned. There's plenty of cool stuff. If you missed the start of the stream, go back and check it out and you can see what unboxing a, a, an acoustic guitar can look like once it's in a square bag. It was, it's kind of hilarious that it fitted in there. Yeah, so that's what we took it out of. <laughs> and it all just clipped together. I couldn't believe it. I, I'm, I'm shocked. Plays great. All right, guys. Well, take it easy. Thanks again for hanging out, and uh, I'll, the stream will stay online once it does whatever it does in the background, caches or whatever. And uh, yeah, if I missed your question, leave it on the replay. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you. 
catch you soon. Thanks for hanging out. And thanks, Six in Line, as well. I appreciate your uh, super chat earlier. That was uh, totally unexpected and very cool. So thank you. And I'll catch you very soon. Let's see if the black screen works. Ready?